Hey, good morning. Eric Arnold here. Wee hours of September uh, 14th, a Wednesday, and we're uh, going to have an episode of the Politics Barn here. Uh, a little bit of a grab bag episode and feeling a little bit down this evening. Uh, I think my outrage meter is just kind of, I think it's just pegged. It's gone to the stop and it's just burned out. <laughs> so I think the energy is just kind of out of me. And I think a lot of you, you people are kind of the same way where it just seems like there's new, some new outrage every day, some new scandal that just gets basically <sighs> obliterated by the next day's scandal. And you're just, and eventually you're just kind of like numb to it all. So I guess the thing that jumped out at me in the last 24 to 48 hours, these FBI raids are now, I guess, intensifying. And you knew it was coming. I mean, when they raid the president's uh, private residence, you know, what's next? You know, what's off limits? Nothing, really. So to no one's surprise, uh, they've indicted um, Trump's strategy man, uh, Steve Bannon. Uh, they've uh, issued subpoenas uh, to God knows how many Trump loyalists, lawyers, what have you. Um, they've seized the cell phone of uh, the My Pillow guy, uh, Mike Lindell. Uh, hell, they're even knocking on random citizens' doors now, apparently, according to Tucker Carlson. Uh, he had on a woman on his show, and she said, they came to my door early in the morning, they banged on the door, and there's three FBI guys. And she said, what? Well, hello? And they said, we had an honest tip that you were at the Capitol. And she's like, what? I, uh, you know, uh, so she's scared, of course, because uh, she watches the news and she knows, you know, who she's dealing with. She's dealing with bad people. And she tried to show them, no, I wasn't at the Capitol. And they knew goddamn well she's not at the Capitol. Every second of that riot is on tape. The FBI film labs have gone over that tape now for going on two years. They know damn well she wasn't there, but of course uh, that had nothing to do with it. They just want to go out and uh, start banging on the doors of Trump people, Trump voters, just to sow fear. So that's happening. You know, that is happening. I know most of you don't care about that. You should care. I mean, these are the most fundamental things that we take for granted in this country. And I, I know a lot of you just can't believe it's happening. That's why you just choose not to hear what I'm saying. In other words, all right, that's, that's terrible. I'm, I'm just going to pretend that's not going on. It's not only is it going on, it's going to get worse. <laughs> that's a promise. I, I guarantee you that. What would stop these people? See, this is all part of a strategy. I told you many times now that one of our closest allies, our closest neighbor, Canada, has become a totalitarian nation. And I base that on the fact that Justin Trudeau, the dictator up there, has seized bank accounts of his political enemies. Uh, and the truckers, if you get <laughs> Justin Trudeau versus a bunch of owner operators, that's those are his political enemies. Well, he's decided to fix them. Their GoFundMe campaigns and whatnot. Uh, he seized that money, froze it, took it. Uh, I don't know if he ever gave it back. Uh, if he did, he certainly took his time about doing it. Uh, furthermore, then he would walk back through the financial chain and not only taking the GoFundMe money, but he would find the bank account from where the Go money came into the GoFundMe fund, and he would freeze that bank account. Well, this is just complete totalitarian tactics. Uh, I'm reasonably sure there's no law that supports that in Canada, but he did it anyway. So... Based on those actions, I, my conclusion is, you know, you're dealing with China there. That's a Chinese 
type country. There's no freedom. There's no laws protecting the citizen from the ex uh, excesses of the government. Uh, well, we're here now, too. Here in America, we're at basically the same place. We don't have free elections anymore. That's what the point of these FBI raids are. Well, what do you mean? Are they denying people the right to vote? Well, no, but what they're doing is they're sowing fear on one side of the political aisle. They're trying to intimidate, harass, limit the money that goes into Republican candidates. And they're having good success doing this. Uh, how, do you turn on the TV? Do you see the ads on TV? Oh, they're three, four, five to one Democrat because Republicans have trouble raising money. Now, they're going to have trouble anyway just because of the way the political lines are being drawn in this country in that the Democrats support the the interests of the rich, the elites. They're the ones that are making out like bandits during this uh, pandemic slash progressive Marxist takeover. They're making out like freaking bandits while the rest of us are taking it in the teeth. They're getting richer and we're getting poorer. So they want things to stay the way they are, so obviously all their money is going to the Democrats to support their uh, policies of making things worse for the little people and better for the elites. But there is some people with some money on the Republican side of the aisle, but they're not going to stick their heads up too much because God knows what might happen. It's like, well, maybe I should get involved here. I know that uh, things are bad in this country and they're getting worse and I need to, you know, somebody needs to say something. So, you know, some of these small businessmen or mid-sized businessmen on the Republican side of the aisle, Mike Lindell, for example, Mr. My Pillow, uh, he's, I wonder how he's thinking about things right now. You know, he's, he, he's a mid-sized businessman that decided he wanted to get involved. Well, he's getting his teeth kicked in right now. You know, he's the one that poked his head out of the foxhole going, should, should I get involved? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'd like to protest. I don't agree with how things are going. <laughs> Boom! Just like a game of whack-a-mole. Get uh, Stick your head out of the foxhole, you're going to get your head chopped off. So that's tamping down the fundraising of the Republican candidates. It's hard to win when you have no funding. So the Democrats can just uh, blanket the airwaves with their propaganda. And, you know, we don't have free elections in this country anymore. It's not a level playing field. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little discouraged. But we will, we will march on. We will persist. Uh, I guess at some point, you know, it's almost, I guess it'd almost be a badge of honor, I guess, when the FBI does come and knock on your door, um, just to say, hey, all right, somebody noticed me, all right, yeah, all right, the thugs are here for me, you know, as long as they don't actually take you away. Uh, they didn't take the woman away, they just intimidated her, of course, you know, apparently that's all you need to do now is to... For you Democrats who want to get us, I guess that's all you guys, I, maybe you guys all know this already, is you just got to call up your local FBI office and just say, my neighbor was at the Capitol. And, and they come out. They, they literally task agents to come out to your opponent's house and scare the shit out of them. I guess that might be something fun for Democrats to do. I, do you even have to make up story? Do you even have to give them any kind of facts or anything? I mean, this was an anonymous tip, according to this woman from New Jersey who had her house FBI'd. Swatted would be the wrong term. FBI'd. Uh, I guess we could call that a thing now. FBI'd. So do you have to give details? I mean, do you have, or can you just say, uh, well, I think, uh, I think uh, John Smith was at the Capitol. Well, how do you know that, sir? Well, see, I just know. <laughs> I guess that's all you got to do. I mean, really, probably that is all you got to do because 
the FBI want to come out and shake the trees and scare the Republican voters. So, you know, it's a wink, wink, nod, nod, uh, know what I mean type thing. Nudge, nudge, nod, nod, know what I mean. So uh, you probably don't even have to give details. Frankly, they probably pass out numbers at these Democrat rallies. There's probably an FBI here. Do you want an FBI uh, Republican opponents? Call this 800 number. So I guess that's, uh, we'll have more of that, you know, just more and more of that. I, I, I guess what we're hoping for, trying to be serious here a little bit, is that at a certain point the FBI just becomes a joke, a punchline, you know, a comedy act. It's like you're out looking at uh, some suburban housewife from New Jersey. Are you kidding me? Have we run out of crime in this country? Seriously, that's what you guys are now into. You're talking about people that go to school board meetings are more dangerous than uh, Arab terrorists that want to blow up buildings? Are you fucking kidding? That's what we're hoping, that these it'll, their actions will become so outrageous that people will just laugh. They'll just laugh in their face and just go, you got to be kidding. But, you know, of course... Uh, I don't know if they laughed in Russia, you know, did, uh, did uh, Solzhenitsyn laugh when they were marching him off to the uh, gulag for 10 years? I bet he didn't, because he knew he was uh, actually going to prison. So I guess that's, you know, where it'll stop being funny, is when these thugs start actually, and well, they're doing it. I mean, you know, it's not funny when a Trump lawyer has to pony up half a million dollars for a defense against phony charges. That's not funny. That's a misuse of power. Um, all right, I know. They wouldn't do it unless they had... Re Bullshit! These guys have lied, 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 lied. They made up... I don't know how much stuff they made up during the Russian hoax. They're liars. They're not a law enforcement agency. These guys are a Gestapo. So I don't want to hear it that they broke the law. No, they didn't. The ones breaking the law are the Democrat Justice Department. They are the criminals. So there. What else? Oh, market collapse today. Um, I'm not really that interested in the markets going up and down. Uh, the market collapsed today just because all the Wall Street people were certain that inflation was under control. And today was, I guess, inflation report card day. So the government comes out with their report card on how much inflation has gone up or down. And everybody was certain it would go down because, you know, obviously the person that was making the report card wants it to go down. They have a vested interest in it going down. So it didn't go down because it's so damn big they couldn't even fudge the numbers enough to make it go down. They couldn't, it's, I guess it's basically like trying to hide a freaking iceberg in a doghouse. You just can't do it. So, you know, and then, uh, uh, so the market panicked and dumped their stocks. They'll buy them all back tomorrow, probably. But what I'm more interested in is, you know, it just confirms what we all know. Inflation is burying us out here. It's burying us. And it's so frustrating for me. It really is. Because, you know, I see some of my moderate friends occasionally and they don't get it. They're just not plussed by the whole thing. They, they, it's either not affected them because of their particular little situation or it's been covered up by the fact that some other thing in their life has gone well. Perhaps they get a promotion or whatever. Uh, so they're not really just, they don't see it. It doesn't bother them. Um, it's bothering me, I mean, um, my family, we've lost tens of thousands of dollars due to the Biden policies. Um, our standard of living has gone down, or that would be even worse than that. Uh, so, yeah, it's definitely bothering me. I mean, from a voting perspective, I guess the part that 
I don't know the answer to is how many people are worse off than I am. In other words, it's hurting me. I think it's probably crippling other people that are a little closer to the insolvency line than I am. And uh, those people may be being crippled. Now the question is, will they blame the correct person? <laughs> That's the trick is that, oh my God, we're almost bankrupt. Well, God damn that Doug Mastriano. It's his fault. I'm going to vote for Josh Shapiro, you know, a Democrat. You're going to blame the Republican and vote for the Democrat. Obviously, the correct answer is you vote for the Republican because the Democrats are the ones that have fucked this all up. And the Democrats have been in complete charge of this country now for going on two years. So how the hell could it be the Republicans' fault? But... You know, people will believe damn near anything they're told to them in a TV commercial. So, so you know, that happened today. Uh, the only other thought I had here, something I thought was just interesting, and I don't know if it really means anything. Uh, we have, I talked, made a couple videos here about the governor's race here in Pennsylvania. And I kind of noticed that no one gives a shit about the Pennsylvania governor's race unless you live in Pennsylvania. And, then that, and even then you don't give a shit. You know, there's probably like 50,000 people in the whole state of Pennsylvania that give a shit about the governor's race. Uh, and they're probably the ones that lost their businesses during the pandemic. But we have a Senate race, which could determine the control of the United States Senate, which does affect pretty much everybody in the United States, if not the world. And the Democrat candidate is named John Fetterman. He is a, an unabashed, unapologetic communist. <laughs> I don't think he would use that word just because he knows that is a negative word. But he would pretty much then go ahead and describe all his policies are pretty much the definition of communism. He just wouldn't use the word. Um, he's a liar. He's a scum. He's, Tucker Carlson covered this guy very well. I'm going to link that video that uh, Carlson did on Fetterman. I mean, this guy is, he's a man-child. This is a guy that didn't even have a job until he was in his mid-40s. He sponged off his parents his entire life. His entire job, I guess, in his 30s was being the mayor of Braddock. Pennsylvania, which I believe has 2,000 people. Do you know how many hours a week it takes to be the mayor of a city that's got 2,000 people? Like three. <laughs> what do you do with the rest of your time? Well, I guess you attend uh, uh, communist uh, symposiums in Aspen or things like that because you certainly didn't have a job. He's being supported by his parents. I mean, what, who is... Who deserves to be governor that has a resume like that? You're a child. You're a child. You're not a man. You're sponging off your parents until you're in your 40s? You're not a man. That's embarrassing. My God. Have some self-respect, guy. But, you know, what's past is past. He can't change that. He's, But certainly doesn't qualify him to be senator. Um, he's basically the worst of the worst. I mean, he's further to the left than Josh Shapiro, who's running for governor, and I have nothing good to say about Josh Shapiro. Fetterman is worse. Uh, Fetterman is going up against Dr. Oz. I think the race is neck and neck. Frankly, I think Oz is pulling ahead now. Um, the polls, of course, don't show that because... The polls are skewed and biased, and they're not really polls. They're um, uh, 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 opinion pieces. They are things trying to influence your vote. They're not giving you an accurate picture of who is going to vote for who. They are trying. It's what they've always done, and they'll continue to do it. So they're showing Fetterman in the lead. I think he's losing. I think Oz is winning this race. And I think Oz will win relatively comfortably. And one of the things now that makes me think that 
in the last 48 hours have been two major Democrat uh, propaganda organs that have come out with anti-Fetterman pieces. Uh, the Washington Post and CNN. These are not news organizations. Have we covered this sufficiently that you know this? They are not news organizations. They do not exist to inform you. They exist to indoctrinate you. They are uh, propaganda. They have no news value whatsoever. So when they are putting out information, it's something, there's an angle. They're trying to guide you one way or the other. So the Washington Post opinion piece basically pointed out that Fetterman refuses to debate Oz. Um, he said he would do six. Was it five or six? Fetterman was initially all gung-ho about debates. Then when he got a lead, five or six suddenly became zero. Now he said he's going to debate, but it'll be sometime late in October, and I don't know when or where, so he hasn't agreed to debate. That's a lie, just another lie, just another Fetterman lie. So he has not agreed to debate. Um, largely, you know, everybody knows the guy had a stroke. Uh, and people are saying, well, he can't. He can't debate because he can't say three words together and make them make sense. I think it's just because he can't defend his communist policies. It, it, when he says it out loud, outside of his uh, of Bryn Mawr collective of uh, uh, like-minded communists, it sounds ridiculous. When he tries to explain that putting murderers in jail and keeping them in jail is a bad thing? It sounds ridiculous. It's like, if he doesn't have a room full of seals clapping going, yeah, yeah, I mean, we all hold up gas stations and gun somebody down in desperation when we're 17. That shouldn't decide our entire life. We should be able to be given another chance at like 27. That's ridiculous, putting us in jail for some murder we committed at 17. That's stupid. We should be able to get out of jail and approve ourselves in like 10 years or so. You know, when you say that to anyone who's lived on the planet Earth for more than 30 years, you look at you like you're from Mars, and he knows he can't defend his position, so he doesn't want to debate. Um, and then, of course, the th you know guy can't say three words together. So the Washington Post is, uh, I guess, pointing this out, that, hey, the guy won't debate, and uh, he's been lying about his uh, stroke, and he has been. I mean, when he first had the stroke, it was, well, he had a little bit of a stroke. It had not a big deal, don't worry. Recovering, back on the campaign trail, totally ready to be U.S. Senator. Absolutely can do everything a U.S. Senator needs to do, you betcha. Well, none of that's been true. None of that's been true. You know, now, you know, maybe he just didn't recover as well as he thought he was going to. That's possible. But he doesn't release his medical records, and that's another thing the Washington Post po uh, pointed out. You know, this guy in brown, I mean, they would, <laughs> would have did. So why, why are they doing this? And then CNN, uh, their piece was much less critical. Theirs was more or less along the lines of just saying, hey, the Washington Post said that over there. You know, they said that. That was all CNN basically did, was just point out that the Washington Post really called out Fetterman. So what, why? You know, they're not, they don't want to, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not trying to get you to vote for Oz. I mean, what is the angle here? The only thing I can think of is they're trying to uh, switch candidates. They're trying to get Fetterman. They, I would bet that the Democrats have somebody lined up in the wings and is getting ready to take Fetterman's place. Uh, it could be sitting Governor Tom Wolf, who has been uh, term limited and cannot run for governor again. Uh, he's got nothing to do. He's got super name recognition. He probably would win. Uh, could be any number of uh, sitting uh, United States Congress people uh, that are on the Democrat side. 
uh, Madeline Dean, uh, Chrissy Houlihan, any number of them could step right in there. I mean, they would have to, you know, they could, re they, they could, what's the word I'm looking for? They, uh, they make another hole because these people are running for Congress or running for the House, so they'll have to step up someone else to take their place. This has to happen. I mean, I thought to myself, well, this has to happen soon, though, because of this idiotic early voting that we've uh, that the Republicans foolishly, foolishly allowed to happen uh, in 2019 with Act 77. Um, but, you know, the Democrats control the levers of power. They have the Secretary of State, they have the governorship, they have the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. So, with all those levers of power, as we found out to our great chagrin during the pandemic, they can do anything. They can do anything. In other words, they could swap Wolf in there in the middle of October after voting already started, and basically just say, well, all those people have voted, we'll let them vote again. <laughs> you know, they would do so, they could do things like that. So I kind of think they're angling to shove Fetterman to the side. That's what makes me think he's losing. I mean, why would the Washington Post come out and post a negative article about one of their guys? That makes no sense at all. They're not a news organization. They're a propaganda organization. So uh, Fetterman's losing. There's no question in my mind he's losing. And the other thing they're worried about is that Fetterman's going to drag down the governor candidate, Shapiro, making space for my man, Doug Mastriano, um, which I think would be, you know, I'm holding my hope out that in this cycle, with the damage that the Democrats have done, oh my goodness, how could you not vote for the Republicans in this cycle? But, you know, I recognize that when a candidate is running 24-7 advertising, unopposed by another candidate, it brainwashes people and they just think, well, yeah, that guy's pretty extreme. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, well, okay, you know, uh, we, had, uh, we had a governor lock us in our homes for uh, several months. That, that, you didn't think that was extreme? Oh, okay. You know, the guy that wants, wanted to us to be able to live our lives. That's extreme, apparently. Oh, well, that's all I really got for you. I, I you know, so much going on right now. Like I said, it seems like there's a new scandal every day. And, it, it, and by the time you get worked up about that one, there's one the next day that covers that one up. It's just, uh, it'll, and it'll get worse. It is going to get worse. Especially if the uh, Democrats conclude that they're losing. In other words, the, all their tricks and all their uh, uh, censorship and all their intimidation tactics to tamp down Republican enthusiasm and political free speech, if they conclude all that's still not going to get them the House and the Senate, they could try anything. They could do anything. You know, there's no boundaries for these people. Where are the boundaries? You know, well, let's send the Justice Department in to invade the uh, home of the f leader of the other party. Done it. Check the box. They've already done it. There's no boundaries for these guys. So I don't know what they'll try next. It, it, you know, it, let's put it this way. Whatever they do, you know we're winning. If uh, they continue to push forward, you know we're winning. We just have to keep going. We just have to keep going. S keep talking. Keep talking amongst yourselves. That's my thing, I think, right now. And I'm just kind of riffing now. I, uh, you know, this video's probably already run too long. But I I'm just not sitting in polite company anymore. And when someone says, oh, you know, that Josh Shapiro is very handsome. I jump right in and say, you know what, I think he's ugly. I think he's an ugly man. He's done ugly things, and I'm not going to just let you sit there and compliment the enemy. You know, I'm, I'm going to be that guy. Uh, we're not just going to sit there and, uh, well, John Fetterman, he's a good campaigner. He's a good campaigner. Well, I guess he's a communist. Do you know that? I mean, I guess uh, uh, Lenin was a good campaigner, too. 
you know, we're not going to just sit and play company anymore and listen to this stuff. We're going to attack that sort of thing, and we're going to try to convince people of some things that they probably don't know. But at any rate, we'll see how much that works. <laughs> we'll see. I, I'm, I'm hoping for the best, and I'm expecting the worst. That generally, that's worked okay for me in my life. You expect the worst and you hope for the best. That way you're prepared and you're pleasantly surprised if something actually goes well. But you can't expect something to go well because that just leaves you way too exposed on the downside. So, all right, very good. We'll make more videos some other time. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Makes me feel like there's something being done or accomplished. Talk to you later.